Assalamu alaikum. My name is Iram Zulfikar and I'll be teaching you drama 2 that is modern drama, modern theater. What we are going to discuss in today's lecture will cover of course my introduction. We will discuss um, and you will get to know um, about the course contents through course orientation. And we will start with our very first lecture of the course that will include what is drama, types of drama, elements of drama, conventions of modern drama, and of course a brief history of drama that will let you understand how drama has started and evolved into its current position that we are going to study now. Some dramatic terminologies for your understanding and for your basic concepts to get clear. And then we will have a precise introduction of modern drama and we'll get to know how modern drama is different from classical drama an age previous to this one. Um, starting with my own introduction, my name is Iram Zulfikar and my association with the field of education is almost 15 to 16 years old. I started teaching in 1998 and have taught almost at all levels starting from post-secondary, tertiary, local boards, Cambridge streams, undergraduate, graduate and postgraduate streams of education. I have been working with different school systems, colleges, universities, and um, in my current position, I am associated with Air University Islamabad. Um, that is a project of um, Air Force. Here I have been working as an assistant professor of applied linguistics and teaching different courses of language. Um, and have also been hired recently as research manager. Um, now a word about the course that we are going to study together and you are going to study with me. So a word about the course of Drama 2 that is modern theatre. Um, drama 2 builds on the knowledge of students from um, Drama 1 and takes them to the modern drama covering the elements of realism, naturalism and the absurdist in modern theater. The plays that we are going to cover will include um, and present the modern, western and continental dramatic perspectives in their two forms and themes. The dominant dramatical traditions in the history of western drama and performance and modernist experiences with the constituent elements of plot, characterization, language, setting, movement, and theme are the basic features that we will be studying in these dramas and the era. These aspects are brought out in the plays of Ibsen, Beckett, Ocasse, and Shaw, the main playwrights of the modern era of theater. This course introduces students to drama as one of the dominant literary genre in both ancient and modern worlds. And its primary goal is to help students identify elements of drama as a literary genre and be acquainted and familiar with the history and tradition of modern drama. Hence this course allows students to analyze and explore intellectual, social and religious issues relevant to the understanding of modern drama of its age and the contemporary times, the very current times. Um, basically the intention in designing this course and the aim behind this course is to facilitate you um, to comprehend the 20th century theater describing a period of great change within the theatrical culture of the 20th century. What is this change, this widespread challenge to long established rules surrounding theatrical representation resulting in the development of many new forms of theater including modernism, expressionism, political theater and other forms of experimental theater. As well as the continuing development of already established theatrical forms like naturalism and realism. You will be constantly listening to both of these terms, naturalism, realism, and some of other terms which are basically the essence of this very era, the modern era of theater. 
So after knowing what the course intends to convey and what the course allows students to understand, we need to understand what are the aims and objectives of studying this course. Um, after covering this course, students should be able to understand the relationship of theater to the social, environmental and political realities of the period known as modern drama that covers from 1837 till 1968 roughly although it moves on and penetrates into modernism and now postmodernism till the date today students should be able to develop an imagina imaginative sympathy inquiring mind a questioning mind and familiarity with the plays of most important and innovative playwrights of the modern era they should be able to develop a sense of social responsibility, collaborative attitude, artistic standards, and judgment through informed critical analysis. Critical analysis has a significant aspect to um, carry out throughout this discussion of modern drama because we understand that literature and specifically drama captures the realities of life. How far these realities are close to um, everyday life that is what we are going to study in this drama and how far the drama as a yenner starting from the Greek drama has sculptured it and has evolved this very representation of society is another question that we will be covering through this course so the course aims at developing um, in students a sound sense of the process of dramatic structural development in the modern period and it aims at enabling student a respect for the art, um, the art form, and cultivate a foundation for future studies in theater, broadly in literature. So you'll be able to get an insight and a developed sensibility um, that is responsiveness to pathos, to artistic and aesthetic values, and have begun cultivation of imaginative sympathy. Now what are these terms and how do they relate with the, this very course will be parts of our discussion during this course understanding. Students should be able to get familiarity with some of the works of the most important innovators of the modern era. Now knowing, after knowing what are the aims and objectives we need to know what kind of text and what authors and what type of themes that we are going to study during this course. We will be covering four major playwrights of the modern era. Henrik John Ibsen, Sean O'Kesey, Samuel Beckett and George Bernard Shaw. I am giving you a precise introduction of the plays the writers and the themes that they have covered in these particular plays so we know what are the text and who are these writers that we are going to study we will be studying a doll house a doll's house um, written by Henrik John Ibsen um, he was a major 19th century Norwegian playwright theater director and a famous poet and known as the father of realism and the founder of modernism in the theater. We'll move on and study The Juno and the Peacock, written by Sean O'Kesey. Um, you can see their timeline on the screen. Sean O'Kesey was an Irish dramatist, memorist, and a committed socialist. And the drama uh, has been written on the background of Irish Civil War. It's a feministic play and it deals with themes of poverty and religion. The third drama that we will study will be Waiting for Godot. Waiting for Godot is written by Samuel Beckett and Beckett is widely regarded as among the most influential writers of the 20th century. Um, he is strongly and his works are strongly influenced by James Joyce and he's considered one of the last modernist. As an inspiration to many later writers, he's also sometimes considered one of the first postmodernist. He's one of the key writers in what Martin Eslin called the theater of the absurd. 
his work became increasingly minimalist in his later career. This work, uh, Waiting for Godot by Beckett, offers a bleak comedy, tragic comedy, um, outlook on human nature, often coupled with black comedy and gallows humor. Now what are these themes? What do they mean? And how are we to understand them and apply them on our understanding of everyday life? We will be covering them, inshallah, in our covering lessons. The fourth and the last trauma will be Pygmalion. Um, that was written by George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw was an Irish playwright, an essayist, novelist, and short story writer. Um, the issues that George Bernard Shaw covered in Pygmalion were um, basically of education, marriage, religion, government, health care, and class beverage. One very famous theme that you'll be coming across in his play is middle class morality. That is again a, a debate on discussion of class division in a society. That was all about the text, authors, and themes that we will cover in the course of modern drama, too. After knowing and having an introduction of the course, I think we are ready to move on with the course contents. And we are ready to start with um, lecture one of the course of drama two, that is modern theater. Um, before that we move on with the modern theater itself, I would like to refresh your memories regarding some of the basic concepts related to this very genre of literature, drama. We are going to start with drama itself. A question that is often very difficult to answer for students of drama is to describe what drama is. Drama is a type of literature that is primarily written to be performed for an audience. So all the dramas and plays that have been written so far are basically written with an, with an intention of being played on stage. And this very phenomenon can be observed very well while reading them. And that makes them different from other genres of literature that is prose and poetry. When reading a play, it is important to keep certain features of drama in mind. And some of these features relate to drama as literature. Others reflects, reflect its character as performance. So drama is a story enacted on stage for a live audience. You can see some glimpses of the performance on the screen. If this is drama, what is its origin? Where from it is? Where from it has come in the literature? The word drama comes from the Greek verb drawn, which means to do, to act. The earliest known plays were written around the fifth century BC, and produced for festivals to honor god and goddesses, particularly Dionysus, the god of wine and fertility. Now, what is dramatic structure? What is the thing that makes it different from poetry and novels? And what makes it drama, basically? A drama has a structure once the exposition is presented, that is, the presence of characters and a story, and a conflict is introduced in the very beginning of the drama. Now, a conflict, are, a conflict is complication or a couple of complications together, tensions that started building up from the beginning of the drama. Then the midpoint of a drama, drama's plot is the climax. It's a point of highest tension. Action determines how the conflict will be resolved and then a decline starts. And slowly and gradually in one or two acts the resolution takes place when the conflict is resolved and play ends. So this is the basic structure of drama where we have on one end, on the starting end, we have exposition. Moving on, building on the tension and complications, we reach the climax of the drama. And then moving down towards the resolution, we reach the end of the play. And this 
you will see that this structure being followed in all of the place that we will be studying and you would have studied so far what is a conflict and what what are these complications what are these tensions that we study in dramas and um, you know which basically develop interest inside a drama conflict is a struggle or a clash between opposing characters or forces a conflict may develop between um, characters who want different things or the same thing. It may develop between a character and his or her circumstances. Or it may develop within a character who is torn between um, competing desires. So we will be discussing conflict at three levels between characters where two people are engaged in one kind of situation between a character and his circumstances where one character is standing against circumstances or the destiny or within one character who is torn between his own desires of wanting or not wanting of doing or not doing this makes me remember um, a Shakespearean dialogue to do or not to do is the question moving on with it um, now after refreshing our memories what drama is and what is a dramatic structure we need to understand what are different types of drama um, there are basically three major types of drama tragedy comedy and satire although there are many other types as well and subdivisions of um, these three types and some other uh, types of dramas um, which evolved and developed during this um, history of drama. So let's start with knowing what we know as tra tragedy and where the drama starts from. Tragedy is a play in which the main character experiences disaster but faces this downfall in such a way as to attain heroic stature. This is called tragedy. Um, and in our coming lectures, we will be applying all these understandings and definitions of the drama to see how true they are. Even though tragedies are gloomy, they are triumphant because they inspire exaltation at the greatness human beings can attain even in defeat. A tragedy is a play that ends unhappily. Most classic and Greek tragedies deal with serious universal themes of tragedy such as a conflict between right and wrong, a conflict between justice and injustice, and a conflict, a universal conflict between life and death. Tragedies basically pit human limitations against the larger forces of destiny. So at times when we'll be studying this in, in the plays as well, uh, a grand tragedy is a conflict between a character and circumstances, destiny, external forces. Now, the protagonist of most classical tragedies is a tragic hero. This hero is noble and in many ways admirable. This is not a common human being. This is not a layman. This is a person who has all the admirable traits of a personality. However, this has a tragic flaw or gets into a tragic flaw. This can be pride, this can be rebelliousness, this can be jealousy as well, or this can be anything that is not agreeable or admirable by the society. It, it is a personal failing that leads to a tragic end of a drama. Now, understanding what tragedy is, the second form that we will be studying is comedy. Comedy closes with a peaceful resolution of the main conflict. The word comedy um, does not every time um, can be um, denotated as um, presentation of a situation which will give us loud laughters. The comedies that we will be studying basically means the, the stories, the plots, which will, ha which will end um, happily and uh, where you will feel that hero or the heroine or the protagonist has achieved his or her desire. 
there are some forms of comedy high comedy and low comedy um, high comedy is is the it will create a kind of humor um, that arises from subtle characterization social satire and sophisticated wit however on the other side the low comedy emphasizes absurd dialogues jokes visual gages and physical humor so the comedy is a play that ends happily and the plot usually centers on a romantic conflict it's basically protagonist uh, protagonist can be a boy or can be a girl but normally in romantic comedies boy meets a girl boy loses a girl and he wins the girl again or he gets the girl again and this is the basically the structure and the pattern of mo modern romantic comedies so the romantic comedy um, after knowing the high comedy and low comedy uh, types of comedy we need to know three other types of comedy which are romantic comedy steric comedy and comedy of manners um, in romantic comedy the main characters are lovers and the plot tends to follow the pattern of uh, as I just mentioned that the protagonist gets to achieve his or her desire in the end in steric Satiric comedy, it uses humor to ridicule foolish ideas or customs of a society with a purpose of improving um, standards of living. Then comedy of manners basically stereotypes the vices and follies of the upper class. So we have understood that we are going to study three ki kinds of comedy, romantic comedy, satiric comedy and comedy of manners where we will come across um, two sub divisions of comedy that can be high comedy where a comedy has been created through uh, characterization social satire and sophisticated wit or it can also be created through absurd dialogues um, very much understandable jokes visual gauges and movements and of course physical humor Um, unlike tragedy where the major character is the tragic hero in comedies the main character can be anyone it can be a nobility a person from a noble background it can be townspeople a very uh, layman um, like I and you it can be servants it can be any other character of the story who can portray as the major character of the drama so this is the basically another difference, major difference between comedy and tragedy. Comic complications, conflicts always occurred before the conflict is resolved. And in most cases, the play ends with a wedding. And this very particular thing happens in romantic comedy. Um, so we have discussed tragedy and comedy. Now there are some other forms of drama that would include farce and straight dramas. Now farce basically relies on exaggeration. Here the follies and vices of a society are presented, not only presented the way they are, but they are exaggerated to condemn their existence in the society. And they are exaggerated abs with absurdity and slapstick and definitely the idea behind this representation is the improvement of the society and um, an improvement of the uh, lifestyle and vision of the people straight dramas however deal with serious subjects but do not always end in disaster so knowing different forms of drama which were tragedy comedy farce and straight dramas we are going to step into modern drama a modern play can be a tragedy it can be a comedy and it can be a um, a fine mixture of both that is known as tragic comedy and it usually fo focuses on personal issues of people and is about ordinary people and modern playwrights often experiment with unconventional plot structures 
and they use long flashbacks in order to reveal a reality. They use music and they use visual projections of a character's private thoughts. However, these, most of these things can be used when these um, dramas are captured electronically. Now, after knowing what drama is, what are the types of the drama, we need to understand what are some elements of drama which will help us understand um, how to go on with the understanding of a play. Although I, I would have mentioned these terms before in the talk, however, now we are studying them in little detail, how do they un uh, affect our understanding of drama. As I uh, articulated this word a couple of times, conflict. Now there are two types of conflict. I hope that we understand what a conflict is. It's a complication and I discussed that we will be uh, studying conflict at three levels. With a character, uh, with, between two characters, between one character and the circumstances, and within a character where one character is torn between his or her own desires, opposing desires. We need to understand that this conflict can be external as well as internal. An external conflict pits a character against nature or fate, society or another character. And however, an internal conflict is a conflict between opposing forces within a character. We have discussed a protagonist is the central character of the play and often undergoes radical changes as the action progress. These changes can be from good to bad or bad to good depending on the type of drama. If it will be a tragedy, the change can be from um, good to bad. If it's a comedy, it can be from uh, bad to good. And as protagonist, antagonist means the character who opposes the main ca character. Um, in everyday language, we know this character as villain. You can see some of the glimpses on the screen of protagonist, a hero, and an antagonist, a villain. Now, there are some other terms that we need to know. One very important term is foil that's, that has been very well used by uh, all the modern playwrights. However, Shakespeare's drama give you a very well understanding of foil. Foil is a ma minor character whose traits contrast sharply with those of the protagonist. Um, what, are, what is dialogue? A dialogue is a conversation between characters. Now dialogues can be of three types. One is a monologue, other is a soliloquy, and third is a side. Although they can be of four types if we are including dialogue in because dialogue is a conversation between two or more than two characters. However, monologue is a long speech spoken by a single character to himself or has herself or to the audience. And soliloquy, although it's a monologue in itself too, however, in this a character speaks to his or herself and speaks his or her very private thoughts um, aloud and appears to be unaware of the thing that audience are listening to these thoughts. So the major difference between a monologue and soliloquy is that although both are spoken by um, one character to him or herself, in monologue uh, the speaker is speaking his or her thoughts aloud but these may not be his or her very private and secret thoughts, which is very much possible in soliloquy. Second difference is that in monologue, the speech is delivered to audience, where the character is very much aware of this very fact that audience is being uh, involved in this conversation. However, in soliloquy, it, it appears that uh, the character is um, thinking aloud not knowing that his secrets are being shared with the audience. And this very factor basically creates a sense of irony in a play. The third kind of dialogue is aside. 
This is a short speech or comment delivered by a character to the audience but unheard by the other characters who are present on the stage. So it's basically a kind of conversation, one-sided conversation between a character and audience which can be a short speech or a comment to either elaborate something or explain something to the audience and uh, keeping this thing in mind that when a side is presented it means that the other characters they are unaware of this sharing of um, thought between audience and the character. So it's a private one-way exchange of idea between the character and the audience where the only speaker is the character. Now after knowing the drama, the types of drama, elements of drama, we need to understand what are the conventions of drama. Although I might have covered these terms before in the talk, but I want you to get acquainted with them and get them understood. So while we are studying these um, dramas and why we are into the understanding of modern drama, we do not face any difficulty. Cast of characters means um, listed in the beginning of the play. They are listed in the beginning of the play and before the action starts. Act means a major division of a play. Normally Shakespearean dramas will end in five acts. Scenes means um, it's a major division of an act and Shakespearean act, one act of Shakespearean drama will have two to three scenes inside. Stage direction is one very significant aspect that one needs to understand. Um, it's a dramatist instructions for performing a play and a play is written keeping strange directions in mind because this very factor adds into the meaning of a play. Now what does performance of a play means? When you read a play we uh, need to understand and we need to always remember that it is meant to be performed for an audience and this very factor will definitely be embedded in writing. Um, you can see uh, there is a little example from a play where the writer writes, Viona is sitting on the couch. She sees Paul and jumps to her feet. Viona, parenthesis aside, angrily says, what do you want? So we can see in these two dialogues the situation is explained, the sitting posture is explained, the environment and the other objects which should present a part the character is explained and Veona's physical posture and movement along with um, her dialogues has been uh, conveyed and her expressions are also told. So while she is delivering this dialogue what kind of expressions she is keeping on her face. All these um, uh, aspects of staging and stage directions basically add into the meaning of the plot and drama itself. So, theater artists include not only actors and actresses, there will be directors, lighting technicians and stage crew because all these people help in conveying this very meaning of the play that is basically a part of um, I would say the soul of the play. Uh, one actor cannot present what the writer wants while writing a drama. So it's a combined effort of the theatre artist uh, which enable uh, all the actors and the um, people behind stage in order to present and convey the message what the writer has uh, in his or her mind. So after knowing um, theatre artist, we need to understand different types of stage that have been used so far in the history of drama to present these plays. Basically there, there, is, um, there are three types of stage, thirst stage, round stage and proscenium stage. Stage can have many different sizes and layouts. 
And these are the two factors that basically um, brings variation in types of stage. Third stage um, extends into the viewing area and the audience surrounds the stage on three sides only. However, if you look at the round stage, it is surrounded by an audience on all sides and basically this was the very first type of stage that was introduced in the Greek time of place, in the Greek drama. Proscenium stage is, um, is the playing, in, in, in the proscenium stage, the playing area extend behind an opening called a proscenium arch, you can see on the screen and the audience sits on one side looking into the action. You can see the proscenium arch is curtain here. An audience will be sitting in front of the stage on the one side of the stage to look into the action. So we have studied three, we have, we got to know three types of stage. Thirst stage, round stage and proscenium stage. Uh, stages in Shakespearean Shakespearean's dramas were thirst stage which extended into the viewing area and were covered with the audience in all three sides. Now in setting the stage, scene design transforms a bare stage into the world of play. And scene design consists of sets, lighting, costumes and props. A stage set can be um, realistic and very much detailed as presented and can be an abstract and minimal design of stage and I think we will be going through both types of stage in the collection of text that we are, will be studying during this course. A lighting director skillfully uses light to change the mood and appearance of the set as the light presented on the screen can be taken as um, gloomy atmosphere and can also be taken as the romantic ambience. So when these plays are projected, light plays very important role. Costumes again is another important factor. The costume director works with the director to design what kind of presentation a character needs to have and then accordingly the costumes are designed. Again, they can be very much detailed and they can be minimal, depending on the type of characterization that they need to present. Props, it's a short form of properties. Uh, it plays a role in conveying the meaning of the drama. These are items that the characters carry or handle on stage. It can be anything from a flower to a stick or can be um, a piece of cloth or can be a small thing in hand. Basically they add into the characterization and they add into the personality development on the stage. The, the way a character has to be um, perceived by the audience. It basically completes a character. Now although we have gone through these terms, what a dialogue means, what a monologue means and soliloquy and asides, but you can understand them now as the characteristics um, speech, uh, characteristics of speech in a plot. So uh, characteristics of uh, speech of a dialogue may include monologue, soliloquy and aside. Finally, each play is meant to be enacted and hence needs an audience. An audience to experience the performance, an audience to understand the story and of course respond to the characters. Now when we understand the different aspects of today's talk, Starting from what drama is, what are the types of drama, what are the major elements of drama, what are the conventions that have been followed so far, we need to understand and we need to go through and refresh our memory regarding the history of drama. So we may understand how the drama has started and evolved into its present state that we are going to study as modern theatre. Drama had, had its origin in the century of um, 
500 BC in the country of Greece and it has been understood as a literary yenner um, as an art form that is meant to be performed. Looking at the timeline of drama you will see that the very first era was the Greek drama that covers it from 500 to 400 BC then it moves on to medieval ages the middle ages then again the next stage is Elizabethan and Jacobean drama moving on to restoration period 18th century drama and then romantic era that covers it from 1800 to 1880 and then the era the modern era the very present era that we are going to study as I, I would have mentioned earlier that even today modern era penetrates into um, the, the, the presence of drama even today although it now it can be um, uh, known as modernism and postmodernism. However this is the most this is the latest form of drama that time of drama that we are going to study. Now um, refreshing your memories of the Greek theater or Greek drama which is a theatrical tradition that flourished in ancient Greece between 550 and 220 BC accurately in the city of Athens. Athens was the central city of Greece. Um, the city is famous because of ancient Greek theater that was located in Greece. Tragedy comedy and satire plays were some of the theatrical forms to emerge in the world in that very era. Greek theater and plays have had a lasting impact on western drama and culture and are even there in present form of drama. The earliest dramas were designed to worship god and goddesses specifically Bacchus and Dionysus. The Greek tra tragedies of um, Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides were performed annually at the Spring Festival of Dionysus, God of Wine and Inspiration. And a character, a name has um, a very close relevance with drama that is Thespis. Thespis was a character, was a person from Athens, the central city of Greece and he is the first recorded winner of a drama contest, a tragedy um, and um, with, with the introduction of an actor who played various roles by changing masks whose action the chorus commented on in the song the Thespius becomes a renowned and cherished figure in the history of drama he was the person who basically invented this very first form of drama that is known as tragedy by changing masks on his face and um, we understand that the Greek drama uh, did not introduce dialogues um, in that era and the actions were revealed to audience through uh, an activity of chorus um, people singing in the background whether they are on the stage or behind stage um, this character was the one uh, who started with the tragedy form of drama. Thespis according to the um, Themistius account was the first actor ever and usually credited with inventing drama as we know it today. Thus actors are known as thespians and we understand that the name of this um, the term this very term of thespians has its roots in the uh, name of the this very actor Thespis. Um, after the Greek timeline, the Greek era of drama, um, drama went into a period of decline around 400 AD, which was a time of Roman Empire. And this downfall was caused due to power of Christians, since they, they feel that acting has been deemed um, um, at times to be unchristian against Christian teachings and Christian morality and Christian religion, um, adulterous and depraved or worse boring. So this was a time when drama faced um, a serious downfall. Actors themselves have frequently been seen to be one of the 
humbler class of the society and it's only towards the end of the 19th century um, did their status start to improve. However, after that, it was the age of drama's revival, and this was the time of 900 to 1500 AD. That is also known as medieval ages and medieval drama. It was a time when the drama emerged um, hundreds of years later and was altogether a new creation, a new form of drama rather than a rebirth of ancient drama. Uh, the drama of earliest times, um, when I say earliest time, I refer to Greek time, um, uh, had almost um, no influence on the drama of um, Age of Revival, medieval drama. The reason for this creation came uh, from a quarter that had traditionally opposed any form of theater, the Christian church. And um, the Christian church played um, the drama um, and they accepted the dramas. The only acceptable forms of dramas were three kinds of dramas, which were miracle plays, morality plays, and mystery plays. Now, um, in this very age, in medieval drama, the purpose of creating drama was teaching religion to audience, teaching religion to society. And that is why you will see in all these three types of drama, um, the purpose has only been the teaching of religion. You see the miracle plays. The miracle plays discuss the lives of saints. The morality plays will discuss the uh, traits of being good and being moral and being um, religiously acceptable. Um, on the other end, the mystery plays will discuss the life of Christ, the events of Christ's life. So these are known as three M's of um, medieval drama timeline. These were three major themes of drama. Now we are moving on to the Middle Age theater. During the Middle, middle Age, there was great influence of um, medieval drama and most plays were about the lives of saints and or Bible stories. And from here, drama moves into Renaissance drama. This Renaissance drama was a time of um, the ruler of Elizabeth I. And this drama is English drama written before the Reformation and the closure of theater in 1642. It may also be called the early modern English theater or misaccurately Elizabethan theater. And it, it, it includes the drama of William Shakespeare, the most notable playwright during this period of drama. One distinctive feature of the companies and very interesting feature as well that put on Elizabethan play um, was that no matter if the character Rization is of female, the drama will be presented on stage by only male um, people. So there was no female production on the stage, no matter if even it is demand of the characterization. So this is one distinctive feature of this era. So the major playwrights of the Elizabethan drama were Shakespeare, Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Kite, and John Lilly. And then we see Victorian modern English drama, and the major playwrights of the Victorian modern English drama are Oscar Wilde and George Bernard Shaw. We are going to study one play of George Bernard Shaw, Pygmalion, in, um, as a text during this course. And another key uh, aspect of this era was the presence of um, the Abbey Theatre. The Abbey Theatre um, was um, basically opened um, with the key figures of uh, W.B. Yeast and Lady Augusta. And this was opened in Dublin in 1903 and helped to produce new Irish plays. So from here we have um, a presence of Irish plays in the history of drama. And so we reach into the modern drama and the primary characteristics of modern drama is realism. 
Some of the major forms of drama which were practiced during the modern era of drama were tragedy, comedy and melodramas. Now this was a brief history of um, drama as a genre of literature. Uh, before we get into the formal introduction to modern drama, we need to quickly go through some dramatic terminologies that you will be coming across during the discussions um, of the course. Um, although I might have named them uh, many a times during this discussion, but in quickly going through we will understand uh, and we will confirm that we all understand, understand them on the same grounds. So dramatic terminology will basically include acts and scenes and I, as I have mentioned that these acts and scenes are basically subdivisions and you can see this um, very um, triangle-like um, figure on the screen where on the one end basically it's the exposition, then a rising action and the peak of the mid of the drama is the climax and then is there is a falling action and then it's the gnome, right? And these five acts of Shakespearean dramas are um, roughly uh, uh, distributed. It's not a religious distribution. It is a roughly distribution that act one will start the introduction of the drama where the exposition is set and the conflict is introduced. Act two will continue with the rising action of the drama. Then a climax uh, covers the act three and act four and act, act five uh, normally cover the falling action and the end of the drama. So an act is a big break in Shakespearean plays and it's usually five in number and scenes are smaller breaks within acts and usually they are two to three acts per uh, scenes per act. Aside I have already discussed in detail and uh, however one very important factor that we probably will have, uh, might, uh, would have not discussed so far is that aside is a feature of a dialogue that contributes to dramatic irony. It is something, some information, some secret that the um, audience would know, however the other characters will not know on the stage. Comedy, we have discussed it. Tragedy, dialogue is a conversation among characters. Monologue is a speech delivered by one person where the audience um, are intended listeners and this talk can be any talk, any um, thinking aloud can be about the private life or the personal um, likes or dislikes where the speaker knows that audience is listening to the talk. Playwright is the person who authors a drama. Props, script, staging is the effect the play has on its audience and this includes the position of actors, the places where they are standing, um, the, the background of the drama, the props and costumes and the lighting and sound effects. Normally the staging is one factor that um, comes into action when these dramas are uh, practically played on the stage. There normally is a subplot, uh, although all these dramas uh, deal with the major plot, but there are, uh, plots can be complicate, complicated by uh, having various subplots inside. And a subplot is an additional or minor or parallel plot in a play or story that coexist with the main plot. Thespians are actors and actresses. Okay, now we are moving on and are going to discuss and get oriented what the modern drama is and how modern drama is different from classical drama. And we will discuss this difference by discussing um, the very form of drama, a tragedy, um, the very element of tragedy that is tragic hero and some other uh, features which will understand you how drama has evolved from the classical times to modern times and what are the things that mark uh, the major changes. So um, in 20th century 
the tragedy evolved and presented three kinds of tragedies. Um, classical drama, these tragedies involved classical drama, epic drama and domestic drama. So classic dramas are usually dramas which would refer to literature written in ancient Greece or Rome. Um, and the epic drama would refer to literature which has a grand or ambitious theme like of plays written by Shakespeare, Shakespeare and Marlowe um, are the part of the early modern tragedy category and these are the playwrights, famous playwrights who are known for their epic dramas. And the third form of tragedy is the domestic drama um, and which refers to drama set in a household setting and it does not uh, have a grand or ambitious theme. Basically it discusses the um, life of every day uh, and you will see this form of drama happening in the modern drama very much. Um, we see that um, the modern era covers all three types of tragedies. Now we see in tragedies what type of tragic hero has been presented over the time and what type of tragic hero uh, is presented in the modern drama particularly. So it's the uh, birth of new tragic hero that we will see in the modern era. Um, in the Greek drama, Aristotle's protagonist uh, would have been a man of high rank, power or fortune. They can be noble, they can be no of noble birth or show wisdom by virtue of their birth. So it's a kind of protagonist who is man of high rank and is very noble and admirable and agreeable by the society. Uh, when we move on and see uh, the heroes, the tragic hero of Ro which, were, which was presented, um, the, the characterization of tragic hero that was presented in the Roman Empire's era, it continued the Greek tradition of tragedy, uh, particularly um, the noble protagonist, but with far more spectacle and gore. Theatre become, uh, becomes more for entertainment than for civic and religious lessons. However, um, a little later in the age of Christopher Marlowe and um, Shakespeare, um, the writers write the um, kind of tragic dramas which will present a hero that is a noble hero or can be a person of noble characteristics but will have a tragic flaw that will lead him or her towards um, diversity. Now Christopher Marlowe writes a famous um, tragic uh, drama, um, Dr. Faustus, where Dr. Faustus sells his soul to the devil for infinite power and that is the tragic flaw, being over ambitious, keeping lust for several things. We will discuss the uh, some major features of the drama of Dr. Faustus written by Christopher Marlowe to understand how the tragic hero has evolved over the time. Um, this hero um, is not of noble birth but has wisdom. It, uh, he's not of noble birth but has wisdom and academic abilities. Hence he is doctor. And this very attribute matches with the, to some extent with the attributes of um, Roman Empire and Greek tradition. Although it does not match completely because this hero is not noble by birth but has achieved it through his um, noble characteristics. Um, then despite several divine um, interventions, Faustus makes a pact with Lucifer, Saturn. And he's blind to his own salvation by his very self being over ambitious and eventually um, is dragged in a situation um, where he has to deal with the Lucifer for his soul and he sells it. And he's dragged to his place in hell, big time punishment. And this very factor makes it a tragedy. It's not a happy ending. Now, one very important aspect that we need to note here in order to understand the, um, the difference 
in the tragic hero of modern era and in the tragic hero of the previous times is that Dr. Faustus fits into a new type of tragic hero who is both a hero as well as a villain. So known as, can be known as anti-hero who embraces disorder by their actions which are usually motivated by greed, jealousy, lust, ambition or any type of seven deadly sins. So such characters follow nature too readily and tend to ignore civilized behavior. Um, so Christopher Marlowe and, and the modern era will present a kind of hero where if one moves away from order can easily be led to tragedy. Now what is order and what is disorder? What is agreeable and what is disagreeable? That is what uh, has been presented in the uh, dramas um, by keeping certain themes um, in, the, in, the, in the dramas of that era and that was basically to improve the society. So these orders and disorders were very vividly presented in the dramas written during this era of uh, drama, dramatic history. Um, orthodox behavior of the character and characters and disorder will be unorthodox behavior. Um, goodness of the goodness will include it in the order and it, it uh, has a conflict with the evil that will be disorder. Awareness of oneself and self-conceited person and now we are having the next category of conflict is one is peaceful one is uh, addressing a peaceful actions and one is ex addressing violent actions. Um, uh, an order can be a person ignoring temp uh, temptation of society, of people around, of circumstances. And a disorder can be, a, can be um, for a person who is following the temptation for any reason. And these can be temptation of anything, any object or any human being or any kind of particular desires. Uh, a person who will be following the order, the um, admirable order will keep tradition. And on the other end, um, the other person, the person who follows the disorder will subvert tradition. Another theme of order is um, living within one's mean, not being over ambitious, not being spent theft, not following the desires blindly. However, the disorder can be greed, being over ambitious and being, um, having lust for the things and fame and name or anything that um, makes you enter into the seven deadly sins. Um, another theme of order is a person who has a nature of controlling his passion. However, the um, conflict can be of a person who does not control and have unrestricted passion. Um, an order theme of order can be a person not coveting others. However, a theme of disorder is here that is in conflict standing um, is jealousy. And Shakespearean dramas do cover this very conflict of themes very well um, and um, tells the society how two very close friends um, get into this very disorder of personality and hence face a downfall. So um, a person who keeps the order and follow the order will avoid seven deadly sin. However, the person uh, who is being disordered will embrace the seven deadly sin as Dr. Foster did. Um, an orderly character will accept God's order. However, um, a person uh, who is in, standing in conflict will rebel against God's order. And again, it's a um, conflict between grace and mercy and despair and judgment or um, above all repentance and damnation that that we will see the as a major flaw um, in the 
um, tragic heroes and however uh, when we are discussing Dr. Foster's this is one thing that helps him um, retrieve uh, to some extent in the end of the drama. So it's not, it's a tragedy, uh, however he's able to exercise repentance to some extent. Although critiques have different critical views about it and that we will get to know when we will study it. So part of the reason for writing tragedies therefore is to offer the audience a sense of what value systems are important to us as human beings and which systems we should try to prevent from taking hold. Tragedy can educate and help society to change if the audience want to. If they are watching it with the purpose of learning and experiencing lives on the screen or if they are watching it for entertainment they may forget it as soon as they leave the theater. Unfortunately um, this happened in 19th century. Tragedy in mid 19th century became watered down and only used to serve as um, spectacle. Audiences wanted to be entertained and have the social order of their world reinforced and maintained. However, the situation got changed in the modern European tragedy that is late 19th century. And Stan Selvisky was the key figure who created this change. Stan Whiskey created a system which changed the face of acting forever. Rather than just demonstrating on stage, actors were to explore the character inside and out so that their acting as well as the drama was more realistic on stage. And this was the time when these themes took birth, themes of naturalism and fourth wall. Naturalism theater aimed to depict human action and emotion in a realistic way. And fourth wall is an imaginary wall which divided the stage from the audience in a box set. It's a kind of proscenium stage that we have studied, a kind of stage. And th this presented the realistic three-dimensional set with the fourth wall cut out, keeping, keeping in view that this will be the direction where the audience will be sitting. So um, that watered out situation that was um, happening so far was created by Stancil Whiskey by creating a system of change, a system of realism in theater. Um, and some of the major playwrights, Henrik Ibsen, August Stenberg, who was a Scandinavian writer, and Anton Chekhov, who was a Russian writer, were the major playwrights of the era, who began to write more realistic trage tragedies in which real lives were depicted and um, would typically deal with taboos, taboo subjects. These taboo subjects were dealt with in order to improve the ills and uh, voices of the society of that time and they broadly cover the sexual diseases, infidelity, female liberation, social injustice and the breakdown of the family. Um, uh, another difference that can be seen and can be observed in the um, dramas presented in the earlier eras and in the modern era is that although there would still be a resolution towards the end, like in Greek tragedy, there would be no grand speech, major battle or brave sacrifice. These play ended simply with either a small act of defiance, a quiet, definite act or breaking completely from Aristotle's uh, rules of drama, sometimes the character just had to simply go on with the situation. Again, I will bring in uh, the example from Dr. Faustus, who has to go on with what destiny um, decides for him. Um, but what happens with this change? Um, that plays were met with hostility bringing the difficulties and pain of tragedy into the normal social sphere was radical in the extreme. Audience, they were not mentally ready to see this realistic presentation of society on the screen, on the stage. Um, they used to watching um, happy tragedies, um, comic tragedies and comedy and um, stories and plots which were all imaginative, all created. 
Now, altogether seeing reality happening on the screen was a kind of new and um, in a way a bitter experience for the audience. So, uh, watching dilemmas they might face performed without the certainty of a positive uh, outcome. Um, so, there was a resistance to these work for many years. However, tragedy was revived and made both explicitly political and uncomfortably real because there were ordinary people in tragic situation on stage and domestic drama was being performed. So what we've covered so far today, um, we try to understand and refresh our memories regarding drama, what drama is, different types of drama. Um, we refreshed our memories regarding the elements of drama, what are the conventions of drama, um, some of the dramatic terminologies we went through, and um, we went through, um, we precisely went through a brief history of drama in order to understand how the drama has evolved into its present situation. And we, in, we got an introduction of the modern drama as well, knowing what makes it different from the classical drama. Um, I wish you very best of luck to understand lecture one and hope to see you prepared for lecture two that will prim primarily discuss uh, major themes of the modern drama. Allah Hafiz.